Hi everyone, it's April with Hair 101 and I am in my new salon. I'm so excited. I have been waiting for this day for a really long time. It's still not completely done. We have some baseboards and a few things to do and some decorations and I need to bring all my stuff in here obviously so I'm not ready. But in the next couple days I will be able to do hair. I have a sink and some lights and life is good. So I am going to do a Q&A today just to make sure we get a good video out for you guys tomorrow. Really quick, I wanted to share with you guys this amazing video that I just watched from Project Listen. It's so inspiring about a boy that was injured really bad, like life-threatening, horrible, and he has an amazing recovery and I mean his whole story is pretty inspiring and I love what his parents have to say about it. So one of my favorite lines that really touched me from the video was when the mom said, listening is not inserting your own thoughts. And I just think it's worth sharing and it's worth watching. So please, there's a link below. Go and check out that video, you guys. I promise it won't be a waste of your time and you will be inspired. And it will probably help you listen to your clients and your family and your kids and just listen to people better. Um, so with that said, I will get to the Q&A. So Instagram, thank you you guys for asking me all the awesome questions on Instagram. That seemed to be the best gold mine for the questions this time. So I'm gonna take most of them from Instagram. There is a couple, one message from Facebook that I wanna to try to answer and a couple from Twitter, but really Instagram was the best. So you guys are awesome. Thank you all my Instagram followers. My first question is from Hair by Andrew Vargas. He says, April, what is the best way to advertise and build a clientele when you're new to the industry? Um, okay, first of all, I don't know the best way. I know the way I did it and the best things that worked for me. So obviously there's a ton of ways to build a clientele. It's really echoey in here. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to fix that. It's just because it's totally empty. I need to get stuff in here. So what is the best way to advertise and build a clientele when you're new to the industry? <sighs> like I said, I don't really know the best way, but I do know some good ways. So let me tell you those. Um, the best way that was for me was a referral program. I let my clients know that the biggest compliment they could give me was letting everyone they know know that I did a great job on their hair. So I told them if you refer people to me then you get discounts and free cuts and free colors and it worked great. I did three if they referred three people to me, then they would get a free haircut next time they came in. But if five people came in using their name as a referral, and it had to be their first time coming in, obviously, but then they would get a cut and a color the next time they um, came in or whatever after they got that five people. So it actually, I did give away quite a few free cuts and a few free cuts and colors, but think about what that did. It like just compounded because Everybody wanted to tell everyone about their awesome hairstylist and it worked like a charm. You do have to make sure you're doing everything you can to make that person happy because if they leave and they're not happy, they're probably still not going to share. But if you're doing your best and being positive and happy and honest with them, I mean, honesty goes a long way. If you can't achieve something that they want in the first visit, then you just need to educate them and say, this is um, something that is possible for you, but it might take us a few times. And if they know what is realistic and what to expect, then usually they're happy by the time they leave. So that is what I would say is maybe try a referral program. And then there's also local advertisements that you can do, coupons, you can do, um, we would put an A-frame outside of our salon sometimes. But really word of mouth I found to be the most effective. And also I had a lot of people that didn't even have to go out and tell people about their hair because I would do a good haircut on them and then someone would stop them in the mall or Costco or something and ask them who did their hair. And so I would send my clients away with a stack of business cards and say, let everyone know if you want the clients. I mean, if you keep doing that, eventually you'll be so busy that you're telling your clients, no more, no more, or I can't take any more clients. I'm full all of the time. I'm booked out like two months. And so you'll get to that point, but that's what happened with me. So there's your, my best suggestion for that. All right, sorry, I need to take less time answering these questions. I went a little too thorough. Katie Key, Key Berkman, these Instagram names are kind of hard. I'm sorry, I totally messed that up, Katie. 
But Katie asked, hi April, how do you go about opening an in-home salon like what you are require, what are the requirements you need and what are the first things you should have? All right, so this is a tricky one because it's different from every single state and even every single city. So whatever city or state you're in or country, I mean, it's, I was just talking to someone from London yesterday about this actually. I mean, getting your license, everything is completely dependent upon the area that you live in. So the first thing I would do is go to my local city hall and ask them what are the requirements for having an in-home salon. Some cities might not even allow it, but in my city, it's like I lived in a city called West Jordan for the first salon that I had, and the city requirements there were that you had to have a business license, obviously, also a cosmetologist license that was current, and you had to have a separate entrance that went straight out to your house, like they didn't, they couldn't walk through any living space, and then you had to have like a public restroom attached to your salon also that had paper towels instead of a hand towel, and you had to have a 25 pound fire extinguisher, and you had to have the health department and the fire department come and inspect. Now, all of those things were services like the health department and fire department. You just had to call and say, I have an in-home salon, I need it inspected, and they just came and did it. So it wasn't that scary. It seems like a long list of things to do, but really it was a matter of filling out a couple papers, having a couple inspections, and you were good to go. In the city that I'm in now, you actually don't have to have a separate entrance. So I was surprised to find that out because I thought it was just like a statewide rule, but it was just that city. So in this city, you just have to have, um, it's funny because they're more worried about if you had a building permit when you built your salon. So yes, I did have a building permit when I built my salon. And I know a lot of people finish their basements without doing that, but I did because I knew that that was a requirement. I went to the city hall and I said, what are the requirements for a home salon? You don't have to have a fire inspector come to the house. You just have to sign a paper saying that you do have a fire extinguisher. So, I mean, it's pretty simple here. Um, I think the health department still does have to come in and make sure that it's a safe place for the public. But once you do those things and pay for your business license, I think it's like 70 bucks a year or something then you're good to go. And it's really worth the time and the effort and the money. It's not really that much money if you consider the benefits of it. You're protected because if you did it out of your home without having the proper requirements filled, you are leaving yourself vulnerable for someone to complain or report you. You could lose your license temporarily. I mean, there's a lot of bad things that could happen. So I found it best to follow the rules. And it's easiest to find out the rules by going straight to the source walk into the city hall and tell them what you're doing. They will help you. They will find someone that has the answers. So that's what I would say to do to you. Maddie asked, April, are you going to have more kids? Um, I would like to. We've been trying for a while and I've had a miscarriage recently. So, I mean, it's we would love to have more children. Children are, they're such a blessing in our lives and we love our kids so much. So hopefully we do. I don't know though. I, I really can't tell the future, so we'll see. Stemple, that's not a real name, is it? Okay, Stemple223 asks, what hair products do you use on kids, especially for curly-haired ones? Oh, you guys, this is a good one. Okay, so you do have to use different products on curly-haired kids. I mean, it's just a matter of fact. So what I use on Ambry, I actually use, I use good products on my kids. Okay, I don't expect everyone to be able to do this because I get discounts at the beauty supply because I have a hair license. A lot of people ask me what over-the-counter, like store brand things I would use, and I don't know because I never even walk down the shampoo aisle at Walmart because I don't feel the need. I have professional products for the same price I can get those. So. Really, I am gonna just tell you what I use because I know that you guys would like to know the best ones I think over the counter, but I really don't know because I don't use them. I'm sure that there's some good ones, but don't know. But my favorite are the Redken Curl for the curly hairline. It's like the kind of aqua blue bottles. They're not really aqua, okay? They're like a, like a bluish green bottles. And um, they have like five different ones and they're all really good. I have all of them for her. They have like a Re, like a curl up one, a, is it called, not rewind. So the shampoo that I use on her, I just use right now, whatever's on sale at the beauty supply. Like I'm using the 
and it's one of my favorite shampoos anyway. It's the Jasmine from Bain de Terre, and it smells good and it works good on my kids' hair and it keeps it really soft and when I brush it, it's easy to brush out. So that's what I've been using on all of my kids and except for the baby, I use baby shampoo on him. So, um, and he has curly hair, but the baby shampoo seems fine. And then when I style his hair, I use the Redken and I even have like a spray foam that I have from Big Sexy Hair Concepts that I really like that's for curly hair. Um, but I would just say find a product that's made for curly hair. Whatever brand you decide to go with, usually if it says on it, this one's made for curly hair, it's going to be better. And there's like five different ones in every line because there's five different options. Like you can have really crispy, crunchy curls or you could have really soft curls that still like are movable but not crunchy. And then there's like a few other that are just kind of smoothing in like taming down serums. Agles Meyer 53 says, how do your clients react to you moving your salon? Is it negative or positive? Oh, um, I would say negative because they're all like freaking out because the last eight months I haven't had a salon and it's been really hard to get an appointment with me. In fact, I haven't really been doing a lot of hair unless I'm making videos for you guys. So I've had to really like, my clients have either been walking around with ridiculous roots, which is a horrifying thing because I'm going to have a lot of work to do, but also I'm going to take you guys on that journey and show you what to do when your clients come in with like platinum hair with big old roots. I have someone that I'm going to fix and show you guys how to do it. And it's a pain in the butt and I wish that I didn't have to do it, but that's, Hey, that's what happened. So we, um, yeah, it's been negative because they're sad. <laughs> Obviously I'm getting texts constantly. Can you do my hair please? I'm dying. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I can't right now. It sucks. But as far as like just moving it, no, that's not the problem. The problem is just not having it. So now that I have it, I don't think there's a problem. All of my clients are willing to drive whatever distances they can to come and see me. I'm not worried about that at all. Um, you'll find that you have very loyal clients that will follow you to the ends of the earth if they can. And you, I even have people that live out of state that just wait to get their hair done when they come here. And it's, yeah, so they don't get haircuts very often, but. Um, so yeah, it's been negative because they are sat out on the salon, but positive because once I have the salon, they're coming back and it's fine. Okay. Kells Walker says, for new stylists, what color advice would you give? Ooh, I have a few videos on that. And I would say, go and watch my color videos, my toning video. And I would just say, I guess quick advice that I would just say to a new colorist is use what you know, like obviously try to write everything down on paper and try to make logical sense out of it from your color theory. And if you don't feel like you know your color theory, then get your color theory book out and study it till you feel like you know it. Study the color wheel till you've memorized everything on the color wheel in what order and what's opposite from each other and use that knowledge to mix your color. Um, if you don't feel comfortable because you're like, if you think you know what you're doing, but you're just scared to do it because it's scary and you don't know what the end um, is going to be, I would say do more of it. Just keep doing it. Keep your head up. You're going to make mistakes, but you know what? Most mistakes with hair color can be fixed. If your color comes out a little bit wrong color and it's a little bit green, you know what color to add to it, to tone it, to get it not to be green anymore. A little bit of orange red. I mean, you'll just kind of get to that point where you, I think that's the key is don't worry about all the bad things that can happen. More focus on, well, if something bad does happen, I'll deal with it then and I'll figure out how to fix it then. And realize that you have the power to fix things. So don't stress about everything being completely perfect and just do your best. Um, you will learn as you go. That's kind of the only way to go. I mean, you can study your guts out for years and years and years, and it's still gonna be terrifying the first time you put those chemicals on someone's head. So just do it. All right. Beautiful X sinner I like your name. Okay, what is the best way to deal with rude or overly critical clients? And also, what is the best way to get comfortable and to prove yourself at the new salon? Okay, overly critical and rude clients, um, you just have to be nice to them anyway, and obviously you can't make everyone happy. If they're completely rude for un 
reasonable reasons, then they're probably not in the right set of mind and there's really not much you can do. You can just be nice to them back. Worst case scenario, you give them back their money and send them out the door and you never take them again. I mean, that's gonna maybe happen a few times in your lifetime, but it shouldn't be happening with every person. Most people are pretty nice people. Most people are pretty understanding and they're pretty cool. So yes, you will run into a few trolls every once in a while and just do your best to get them out the door as happy as you can get them and see you later. That's all. You're not gonna do their hair ever again. So. Um, which is probably fine because they probably don't want you to do their hair anymore. If someone keeps saying, well, I want you to do my hair and they're just rude, you don't have to do their hair. You can nicely tell them, I am unable to do your hair. And you just have to find a way to say it that doesn't sound that rude because you don't want to hurt their feelings. But I have had to tell some people that I'm sorry, I just can't do your hair and leave it at that. And they might keep asking you why, but you just tell them you just can't. Have you ever used a Loxy color? If not, have you heard anything good or bad about the brand? Um, I haven't used a Loxy color, but I've heard good things about it. So I will check it out. I feel like I haven't really had a lot of opportunity this last year to try new color lines because I've just been surviving trying to use the stuff that I have and not having a salon. So I will venture into things like that later on. Okay, Cosmo Girl 17 asks, what gray coverage line do you use? Redken cover and N series seems to translucent for me. Thanks, love your videos. Okay, so the NN series, I haven't had any problems with the NN series from Redken, but they also have like, um, no, you know, I haven't had any problems with that, but if it is tra too translucent, the Chromatics line has a double pigmented one that they just came out with. So I would say check that out because it's definitely not an iridescent translucent color. It's very dense and opaque. So the new Chromatics line, the brand new one, that it's like the oil and cream developer one. Check that out. And I bought some of those color tubes, so I'm going to be using them in future videos. And um, But yeah, I just went to the Redkin Symposium and the way they described it and the the classes and stuff, it was definitely the most um, dense color that they cut carry. So I would try that one. Niven Simvin, <laughs> I can't say these names. Have you ever gone through Instagram and tried to say everyone's names? It's ridiculous. Okay, Nivisin <laughs> Vin, can't do it. Okay, let me just try to do it fast. Nivisin asked, has chatting up your customers always come naturally to you? Um, and do you ever make, did, did, and did they ever make you nervous to have family watch you cut their kids' hair? Hmm. Okay, so no, it always, it's not always natural. Most of the time I can find something to talk about with someone, but sometimes I have clients that actually don't want to talk. Usually men, usually big tough guys, and they kind of were like, I'm sitting here, just cut my hair. And you just have to kind of read your customer. Um, it has been easy to find things to talk about. I mean, I love hearing about people's lives. I love just asking them questions and letting them go on and on and on. And most of the time they want to know about me too. And so we just have a good conversation and it's really fun. So mostly yes, but no, not always. It's, it was very tough at first even to like have natural conversations because you're like, oh, so the weather's really nice today, huh? Yeah, it's okay to talk about the weather at first. Sometimes that's the only thing you can think of to say. And yes, I know it's totally like cliche and everyone's just like, oh, talking about the weather, but it's an icebreaker. Use what you can. I mean, if you have to talk about the weather, don't feel bad about that. It's okay. <laughs> so yes, I did start out a lot of conversations talking about whatever's happening outside the weather. And I mean, it goes on from there usually, or you can tell that they just don't want to talk and you don't have to talk. You can kind of just, do your thing. Ask them a few questions about their hair. Maybe that can get them to loosen up, but yeah, try listening to them, just listening to their body language and how they're reacting, and I think you'll be fine. So, okay, but the second part, have you ever been nervous about having people watch you cut their kids' hair? No. I actually really feel like I can do a good job with kids that are out of control. I have a, I just like don't give up on them. I just keep 
finding ways to make the kid feel comfortable. Like giving them suckers, letting them spray me with the spray bottle. I mean, you have to be willing to be totally ridiculous and silly with those kids. And usually the parents are impressed by the fact that you can get their kid to actually sit there and cut their hair. Every once in a while, there's been a little baby or something that we've had to just like have mommy hold with, I put a cape on mom and have mommy hold the back of his head down while we get it really quick. And it's never been something that makes me scared because Usually I feel like I have a pretty good handle on it, but if you are nervous about it, I mean, try maybe thinking like, why are you nervous? Are you nervous because you think that they think that you're not doing a good job or are you nervous that you're gonna like get in trouble for hurting their kid or something? I'm like, not sure why you would be nervous about that. Try and think. I guess maybe just thinking that the mom might be overcritical about the haircut and it's hard to cut little wiggly kids. So I can kind of see what you're saying, but at the same time, no, I haven't ever really been nervous with people watching me kind of I've gotten annoyed with people sometimes. I'm not really about kids. Like a couple times a wife of a husband has kind of hovered and like the first time I've cut their hair and like kind of like having a little bit too much control issues and like sticking her fingers in there while I'm cutting and like I've almost cut hands and just been like, okay, listen lady, you need to back up and go, go over there and sit down. And when he's done, I'll ask you, when I'm done with him, like I'm like, okay, I think we're done. You can come over here and tell me what little spots you want me to touch up. But for now, you need to just go. And it's okay to kind of say that as long as you're nice about it and say, okay, I really am scared that I might cut your feet. If they're sticking their fingers in there and stuff, I'm, I'm really focused on this haircut and I don't want to cut your fingers or you to get hurt, so you need to go sit down. I've had to say that to someone before. Ridiculous. But um, they get the point really fast and they realize like, most of the time they're like, oh, I'm actually being really crazy right now. And they sit down and they're behaving the rest of the time. So you just need to sometimes point it out. Okay, Live Laugh Ash asked, are you able to cut anyone's hair anywhere outside of a salon as long as you're not charging? What if they choose to tip you for your free haircuts or color you did to their hair? Okay, well, yeah, there's like a million and 10 ways to get around the law and it's really easy to just do it anyway. So yeah, most people will just do that. Um, and you know what? The rules are there to protect us and them. And so you need to realize that like the rules are there and most of the time they need to be followed just for protecting everyone. But at the same time, you need to be able to use logic. For example, I've cut people's hair in hospital rooms before because they're in the hospital and they really need a haircut. One of my friends that was about to have a baby at 25 weeks and had been in the hospital already for six weeks. She, I mean, can you can only imagine the depression that's happening at that point from terrifying things that are going to happen to your family and feeling like crap from sitting in a bed for six weeks. So yes, I went to this, the hospital and I cut her hair and was that legal? Probably not, but you know what? It, was something that needed to be done. So, and did I charge her? Actually, no, I did not charge her for that. So, but did she tip me? Yes, she tipped me. So yes, it's fine. I mean, you can find ways to get around it if you have to, but you have to realize also that it's not something you should be comfortable doing all of the time. It's, if you don't have a license to be like doing a traveling salon, I mean, I know there are some places that allow something like that, as long as they can see your whole setup that you bring in like that whatever you're doing. I'm sure that there's ways to find out. I don't know all the rules about that, but I do know that there are definite rules that you need to be following. And the best way to find out those rules are to go to your local city and just ask them and tell them what you want to do. And they'll tell you what you can do. But if you're doing it just for like a favor for someone that's sick or bedridden or that can't get out of their house, you shouldn't feel bad about that at all. Go and do it. If they, yeah, if you feel bad about tipping or about charging them, then they can tip you, whatever, however you want to say it. It's the same thing. Like no matter what way you throw it up, it's, you're getting paid for the haircut, but whatever. I mean, do what you feel is right in your heart and you'll be fine. So yeah, if you're just like, don't have a license or like a business license and you're just trying to avoid paying booth rent and can't afford to have a salon space, whatever, and you still want to do hair, and you're going, I mean, you need to realize that there's a possibility that someone could turn you in, but it's not like there's like 
hair police jumping out of the bushes yelling, oh, I saw you do hair outside of a salon and I'm gonna make you go to jail. I mean, it doesn't happen like that. It's more like someone would actually have to call the state board of cosmetology and tell them um, this person is breaking the law and practicing hair unsafe and report you. And then you would actually go through like a disciplinary investigation and action from the board. And then they would decide, like they probably just tell you, stop doing that. I mean, so yeah, I mean, it's really hard to get around that, but at the same time, it's really easy just to switch things up a little bit and justify it. So do what you feel is right and you'll be fine. All right, thank you so much, you guys. I hope that helped you. I don't know everything, but I'm glad that I could try to answer the questions that I did know something about. And thank you so much for all of the love and support and for subscribing and just being a part of my life. I love you all and I'll see you guys next time. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. Now that we have this salon done, it's going to be a lot of fun, you guys. So we'll see you next time. Bye.